Welcome to the WFAA Lounge. I'm Jonah Javad, unfiltered, unplugged. And today we will be talking about the Netflix hit series, Full Swing. We like it, we didn't like it, and we've got a lot to get to because a lot of people are watching this, including these two fellows next to me right now. Hello. Pete Friedman, Ryan Osborne, they are members of our digital team. I obviously work in sports. And uh, this, this show came out, I think it was on Wednesday, the 15th. The 15th yeah. of February. And I was done by 17th. I don't know about you guys. Yeah, thereabouts. Okay. Finished up a couple nights ago, but it's easy to w watch through. Okay, sure. so this series follows a bunch of golfers on the PGA Tour and some that have now transferred to the Live Golf Tour. And their backstories, their lives. And if you haven't seen the show, I don't know why in the hell you're watching this segment <laughs> right now. Because this is a review of that show. We're going to say what we liked, what we didn't like. We're going to kind of draft some some different uh, categories and ideas and kind of walk you through through the show a little bit. So let's start it off. Ryan, we'll go with you first. Your initial takeaways when you watched it. I liked it. I thought it was really well produced. I think it's something as a golf fan. I mean, how can you not watch it? It was, it was kind of interesting to see, like, behind the curtain. Uh, I don't know, uh, it, you know, the broad appeal of it. I'm curious what like, kind of non-golf people think about it. Uh, they, they clearly try to appeal to that crowd. They're, they're explaining kind of the basics of how golf works, the PGA Tour. And Here's what par is. Yeah, exactly. What is par? <laughs> you know? right. So if you're, if you're watching it and you didn't know what par was, now you know. Uh, I liked it, though. I think uh, interesting to see where it goes from here. But I think Ian Poulter had a great line in it in all the promos. Like, they picked a great year to do this with all the live versus PGA Tour controversy. Like, that really kind of made the show. And they yeah. really lucked out with a lot of the guys that they yeah. followed ended up winning. Some went back-to-back -back weeks, and so well, they kind of got lucky in that. I part. don't know how much that is luck. We can talk more about that later. But uh, so Are you I, saying it was, it was scripted? Just like yeah, the NFL? yeah, just like the NFL. No, I think they, I think they made some clever uh, production choices. But So I've been a fan of the Drive to Survive series on Netflix. I also watched the... Breakpoint series, uh, which is about tennis. So all the same producers, all these uh, kind of sports docu series on Netflix. I just think they're masterfully done from a storytelling and just visual perspective. So I came into this as a golf fan, really hyped for it, and I think it lived up to my expectation. And to your question, uh, I know my wife has enjoyed it. I know some of my friends' wives have uh, enjoyed it, and they're they're, they're now excited to watch uh, more tournaments, which is exactly what. Drive to Survive did to me. I hadn't seen like a single Formula One race before that, and now I'm waking up on Sunday mornings and watching those. So uh, I think that's certainly the the end goal, right, for the PGA or potentially even live in kind of getting behind something like this. Yeah. So I'm a golf junkie, self admitted, yeah. and you know I I know the guys that most people are like, how the hell do you know that guy? Yeah. You know I, I know those guys, and to me. It felt like a lot of the show was telling me what I already knew, maybe with just different camera angles, different announcer inserts, yeah. um, a little bit more backstory than maybe we've seen. There were a lot of vignettes about these guys, which I like to some degree because we do a lot of storytelling yeah. here at, at WFAA. And so I kind of got into that. But I was really hoping in the show that I would learn or see things that I didn't already know. And I yeah. felt like there were a lot of reveals and it was really just kind of a repurposing or a rebranding of a lot of stuff that happened that we kind of already knew. Well, well that, that, that's what these producers do, right? They try to uh, elevate the storytelling of it all. And that's been a complaint I know in like F1 circles. It's just like... Well, that's my complaint with Hard Knocks. And yeah, you so know what's going to happen. I love Hard Knocks. And I, you know, and those games, they'll play it out with all this yeah. stuff. But the best stuff from Hard Knocks and NFL films, you don't watch yeah. because the producers will leave it out because if they put that in there and it all hell breaks loose in the league because of something somebody said or a coach or a player said, the best stuff is probably sitting on some producer's hard drive, external sure. hard drive at home. But we got some cool stuff in there, like Rory saying F Phil, right? Yeah. Like that was stuff you wouldn't have seen previously. And certainly some of the Joel Damon stuff and, you know. Okay, so, all right, I think we've properly introduced <laughs> yeah, the okay. show. Yeah, Again, yeah, that's fair. If you've seen it, you, you kind of know where, where we stand on it. So, um did you like? I'll just start it up before we get into the categories. Yeah. Did you like the show? I liked it. You I, did. I okay. think it was, it was definitely worth the uh, what, roughly seven, eight hours. Uh, Not a hard time commitment. I think some of them. Maybe we'll get into this later. But it, it, I was wondering how much of this was uh, run through the PGA Tour. It clearly <laughs> wasn't run through Live, uh, even though they right. did talk with some of the Live guys. 
So I kind of took some of it with a grain of salt, a uh, grain of salt, because the live guys were definitely portrayed as like the villains, and, mm-hmm. and maybe they are in this story that golf's going through. Uh, but I think I think that was the only thing. I was like, I don't know. Some of this is maybe played up a little too much. But overall, I thought it was I thought it was really good. I think it's something golf needed because these guys are so you know they'll they'll play in a tournament, get on their private jet, go home, and you don't really see or hear from them outside of that. So I think this is something that that golf as a sport really needed. Uh, same. I really liked it. I think what we got uh, for, in that behind the scenes stuff, the yeah, private jet of it all. That's that stuff. I it, thought I like that. Yeah, that jets, I, baby. Yeah. I, no. Jets. So I, I really, I really like that stuff. I think uh, to your point about hard knocks, I think in time, maybe some of this will turn out to be a little more formulaic, and it'll be you know the same. If we get seven seasons of this, you know, we're gonna know that whoever they're following is gonna have a heartbreak at some point. You know, like with the guy who gets cut in hard knocks or yeah. whatever. But for now, I think it's really novel. And it's interesting, and I think, you know, I, like from my wife's perspective, for instance, she loves the Ryder Cup because you see these guys express some real, yeah. like, passion and personality. And this is a way for, I think, fans to see a little bit more of the personality. We're seeing that in general in PGA Tour coverage these days, like with, like, the mic'd up stuff they're doing when they're walking they're, down the they're fairways. Trying. They're trying. But this right. is another way that, that, uh, yeah. that does that. So, yeah, I really enjoyed it. So... Again, being a golf junkie, it means watching a lot on Saturdays and Sundays. And yeah. again, similar yeah. to like my wife can't really sit through it unless it's a, a major tournament yeah. or if it's somebody she remotely knows or if it's close. Like she yeah. got into the, you know, the, I think it was Sepp Strzok and Will Zalatoris were going shot for shot in a tournament <laughs> last year. She kind of got into that. Of all, of all the names. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she knows that I did a couple of stories with Will Zalatoris. Yeah. So she's like, okay, that's kind of, you know, we, we kind of pull for him when he's in the hunt. So, um, you know, and I think about it and I try not to knock on the producers or the show at all because it's golf. Yeah. It is not football. It is not basketball where there's a lot of commotion and energy behind it. It is very quiet and boring. And, and mostly, uh, uh, money aside, low stakes, right? There's right. not a lot of and danger. I, and, and I hate to say it, but I'm going to say it. A lot of these guys are boring as fuck. That's I'm sorry, yeah, but they fair. are. Yeah. They're very boring yeah. because they eat, sleep, golf. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. They're working out. I'm like, guys, you really work out that much? <laughs> and they do golf. And they do golf work. And they do golf workouts. Yeah. Like they don't go and they do the bench or hit the squat rack. Some of them well, maybe Brooks do. Brooks might. Brooks, Brooks yeah. might. But, <laughs> but a lot of these guys are doing like cable rows in a specific and it's all really targeting. It's yeah. great for golf. Yeah. yeah. But it's just it's all golf all the time, which I get if that's your career and you need to pursue it because PGA tour is cutthroat. That's great but you don't get the personality they necessarily might get in other sports. And I felt like they did hit the market sometimes at some yeah. parts in the show. And sometimes they really didn't like no, no offense to Mito Pereira and say Tagala, but that episode I think was yeah. a snoozer for most people. I think it's fair to say yeah. that was my least favorite. And they episode. rolled in the role of the die and not, not yeah. to diminish, you know, who they are as people, but I just, their personalities and where they're at in their careers. I didn't know if it, warranted an entire episode well, of that but that's the that's the and they also take. portrayed Sahith as like this total upstart who knows if he's gonna maintain his card yeah. you know he's like 35th in the yeah. world yeah. yeah so like he's not exactly a guy who's like on the edge but and right. you knew Mito had lost the PGA from the first so that, episode that's the other thing which, which, time jumps around the right? time yeah. jumps were a little which again if you didn't know anything about the golf schedule maybe it wasn't as big of a deal but by the time you got to that episode you kind of knew the ending on, on some of it. Did well, you, I mean, they had in episode two and three, I think they showed Mito have a collapse. Yeah. So. yeah that did, was, you, uh, did you like how they did the the kind of like the character formula at where they like had one or two guys per episode as opposed to just doing like a chronological thing? It makes sense why yeah. they did it from a storytelling perspective, but it definitely led to some repetition. Yeah, I liked it because it was probably their way to go as deep as possible in like one particular guy when, yeah. you know, we do storytelling here. I mean, that's, that's kind of the way you do it. But as a, as a pure golf fan, I was like, Hey, wait, why are we starting at the PGA? That's, that's three weeks after or a month after the masters. Well, the average person watching it may not know that. So I think for their purposes, it, it kind of worked. It did just get a little jumpy. <laughs> so, <laughs> it did. Uh, so, yeah. So I, well, I think it made sense why they started with that episode though, right? Cause Justin Thomas and Jordan Spieth. You I mean, got to have that, some star power just to start it off. And there was a lot of Dallas star power involved in this yeah. with Jordan Spieth in particular. There was. Right? And and also not to mention Scotty and Will Zalatoris who's in every episode. Yeah, right? He's, not <laughs> but he's on the leaderboard. Well, you time. have to squint because the moment he turns sideways, you don't see him anymore. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. That's fair. So, I, what I really took away from a Dallas perspective is damn, these guys are really good. Yeah. 
but there wasn't a whole lot of, you know, Dallas necessarily shown besides maybe Scheffler doing the walk and talk with his wife. Yeah, at a, at a spot my wife goes to get coffee. And he's driving up the tollway to go to the Yeah, that, I like he, he, uh, he pinpointed exactly where he was. For some reason, that little detail, I, I kind of liked it because I always wonder, like, do these guys drive themselves to their private jet? And clearly he did at six in the morning. Right. So the some 80, of that two stuff miles was, per hour. yeah, he was flying. Reading his, you know, his Bible. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So some it, of those little details were cool. And it was cool to see Dallas is, you know, it's no Jupiter, Florida, but it has its own century. Uh, I'm telling you, know, you but it, center it had, point in, in the golf world. If they did a Dallas versus Jupiter tournament, I would put Dallas up there. Yeah, like, let's do a little Ryder Cup sure. thing. Well, Absolutely. the cool thing about Dallas, too, is that all the guys, they moved to Jupiter. They're The guys who are on tour with Dallas ties are usually from here. Uh, and yeah. DFW, in well, general, just has so much golf history. So it was cool to see that. Very true. But a lot of guys are also moving here, like Tom Kim, who's yeah. this upstart player, yeah. recently moved to Dallas. Oh, I didn't and know he's that. probably one of the, the darlings of, uh, of the PGA Tour. Yeah, Another sure. you know great potential story, maybe a character that we see on the show in future years, depending on, you know, because he who was at the President's Cup, was firing the, firing the people up. Like yeah, he gets into it, yeah. so um, hopefully we see him uh, at a future date. But let's let's kind of get into the episodes here. Um, I want you to pick your favorite episode. Hopefully there's no overlap, but I'm sure there will be, because <laughs> to me, in my eyes, I, I think, think there was an overwhelming obvious pick for the best episode. I think so, episode. too, but I want to hear what, why don't you go ahead. Off? I'm going to go... I'm going to go with Curveball. I don't know if this is what y'all are going to pick, but the Matthew Fitzpatrick hmm. U.S. Open win. Because this is a guy who he, he's a Justin Rose type in my head. The guy who always may, he might spoil the leaderboard, but I'm not really interested in him. Uh, mm-hmm. He's he's a guy from England who kind of the dude still has braces. He's like he's had yeah, braces he for 14 like years. <laughs> yeah, he looks like a, like a little kid. But for some reason, that episode, how he was able to kind of fight through all the the trash talk. I don't know if you heard pick that oh, up. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Maddie Skechers, like that's a great line actually uh and, and to make the putty did on 16 to get out of the bunker on 18 i think that whole sequence the way they put it together tying it with his family for some reason it was just like it was weirdly emotional <laughs> yes yeah, yeah i was. mean this is this guy's entire life uh and i think the storyline of him winning a lot in europe but can't really get the job done here maybe a little overplayed because right. these guys are, are well really with him good. coming up short at the pga as well yeah. which kind of you saw the heartbreak but yeah. also the the, the 42 yeah. to come back. I'll, yeah. like, I'll always love that. I think I know which one you're going to pick because I'm between two. Yeah, please don't pick it. So it's I'm, very uh, obvious. I love I the Tony Finau episode. Yeah. Yeah. I thought, uh, you know, he is a guy who, has, as someone who watches the sport, as they portrayed him, you know, fans know him, fans like him, fans, he's so likable, you want to root for him. And he was having, I think, a bit of a struggle. And then to do that back-to-back win, which to my point earlier, I don't think they were immediately there at either of those tournaments because it wasn't like they were there at, on Thursday, right? They showed up on, or maybe on Thursday for the 3M, but the Detroit one, they only had footage on Sunday. So I think they realized, oh, he's going to win back-to-back weeks. we got to send a camera. And they can there. always do it retro, you know, retrospectively and like do the interviews after the fact that he's won. So they yeah, kind of cheated a little bit. So I, I went into that, well, yeah, for sure. I went into that one because Colin Marikawa is one of my favorite players. So I was like, Marikawa Fino episode, let's go. Murakawa was like barely in it, right? He had a, like a couple of things. Because he's like, kind of boring. I yeah, I don't is. know. I think he's charming. But like Finau got, you know, with his family and all, all that stuff, which is just a bunch of characters. I thought that scene where they welcomed him home at the airport was really, yeah. very, really very touching. Really yeah. touching. But that, so. And that's Finau to a T. And I, I, yeah. that's what I loved is that's authentically him. And people got to see that. You know, it wasn't some sort of family act like this. The dude is, he, he eats, sleeps, golf, family. Like, yeah, exactly. But family's one above all of that. And he's got some dance moves. I loved him busting a move there when he uh, saw hey, the family. Hey, yeah. No, he, he, he's great. And um, really one of the good, really good dudes. Yeah. There are a lot of these guys on tour are great guys, but he's truly like one of the most, you know, in touch with what matters, I think, big picture. Um, yeah. You know, more Which ca- is what the episode was yeah. largely about. And uh, listen, I think Morikawa is a great player. I did find it kind of, Odd that they were trying to say, like, this is the next, you know, trying to draw even weak comparisons to Tiger Woods. Yeah. To me, I've never even remotely thought that. Morkow is just one of, um, you know, a lot of these guys in the new generation, next generation. That's You know, it's like with the Hovlins and the Schefflers and all of these guys. I, I don't think he's demonstrably better than any of them. So that kind of, you know, caught me off guard. But his dog did, you know, steal the show, <laughs> steal the show for a Koa? couple of scenes. 
Yeah, oh, so, yeah. private so, jet always appreciated that. Yeah, um, that's 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 a great that's, thing if you can get it. Yeah. A, a dog on a private jet. Yeah, unbelievable. Get that, you got a good show. Uh, Joe Trahan, who works in our sports sure, department, yeah. also loved the Finau episode. That was his yeah. far and away. And I think I know what your favorite one was. It, it, and it's got. I think it's probably most people's favorite. Episode. And I don't. And I. And honestly, it's. It's not just because it's mine. It's because it was my wife's favorite episode too. And I think that speaks to why it is most impactful and important because. Mm-hmm. He wasn't the biggest star on tour. He's not the biggest star. He's he's barely like top 30 or something like that. But episode four, focusing on Joel Damon. Yeah. Somebody's got to be the 70th best golfer in the world. Right. Such a great line. <laughs> but it, and it's and it because that episode for me checked every box that I wanted to see in a show like this. Yeah. Yeah. You got the behind the scenes but you got to learn stuff about somebody that you didn't know. And he's a guy that you have to be pretty into the golf world to know about. Right. And yeah. I and I am and I like knew about his the backstory yeah. of his his mom passing away from cancer mm-hmm. when he was a teenager and why he wears his bucket hat. He had a cancer yeah. scare as well. Mm-hmm. But I didn't know he had that type of relationship with his caddy where they're yeah. like best bros and they're choking up from like a letter he wrote them. That the, was the a really caddy powerful scene. Wrote Joel Damon a letter saying, you know, I want to be your caddy because I believe in you that much. Yeah. Like that is unbelievable. And the fact that they both read it and they're, it checked the emotional box, it checked the revealing box. Um, I liked how also it showed his place in, in golf too with like Max Homa. Uh, there and talking about how yeah. he wishes he took it more seriously. Right, and that and that's part of it. And yeah. I think they called the episode "Imposter Syndrome" because that's kind of how Damon views views yeah. himself. Is like he's this really good player, but he doesn't. He, he his brain can't necessarily wrap his mind and around it, it. So and it also didn't necessarily have the Hollywood ending, right? Because he because he made the cut. Right? He went into the weekend as the leader, yeah. but, he, you, but you could say it was the opposite. Like yeah. he had a good major. Uh, tournament performance, yeah. but he didn't Top win 10. despite like. But he, he should have qualify to get in too. It's and such that, a and that's yeah, yeah absolutely. It's so cool that, to see that personality, and he's so self deprecating, but he's so good at golf. Like, well, to be the seventieth right. best player, can you imagine? Like, I mean, that's yeah. I mean, that's that level. It's that's impressive. He was very entertaining, and that was the other part. And he's of hilarious too. So, like, another <laughs> box for me was I want an authentic golf, and if you know anything about golfers at that. Who are play at that level, they need a bit of a kick in the ass. Like they yeah. need to be challenged to perform at their best. Like one of my best friends, who was could have played college, you know, golf coming out of high school. I play with him now, and he'll just kind of ho hum his way into the low seventies. If we have a bet on the line, or if I'm talking shit, mm. he will go up and throw up like high sixties if he needs yeah. to, just you know, just to win it. And to me, it just it kind of reminds me of man, the good golfers. They really need that, you know. They need that kick. And well, we saw it both ways throughout the. I mean, you see it just as a fan. Well, you watching. see it with the Spieth and Thomas episode. But yeah, you yeah. see it where like sometimes the pressure crumbles them, and sometimes it elevates them. So it was, I think that was cool insight we got throughout it as well. Right. And so yeah, for me that it was the Damon episode just from the sheer fact that it was golf, but it was it humanized him. I mean, yeah, to and, to an unbelievable level. An that unbelievable makes unbelievable level. That makes that makes like my wife, your wife. People who ne- don't necessarily care that much about golf. He's the breakout star. They, it makes you cheer for somebody that you didn't know. He's the breakout star. If you could have bought stock in Joel Damon last week, you're cashing in this People week. People are going to go out and get bucket hats <laughs> to yeah. support Damon. I mean, and he already had a fan following from, yeah. from golf junkies, but... I, to the to the casual fan now, he's people are going to root for him more because Absolutely. they know his story, and I think that's what's so important about the show is that it. And same with Finau, is it creates this kind of human level of mm-hmm. connection, yeah. and I think that's really what people strive for. They either want connection, or we need to see some fucking drama, and yeah. we didn't really get a whole lot of that. But I do want to see what was your favorite moment of the entire show. Uh, I don't know. Let me see. Let me think. Uh, Pete. I mean, I think Go it was it. when uh, when uh, Damon's caddy called him a boner. <laughs> <laughs> their, was, whole, like, their whole game their whole exchange was great. On the course is amazing. Yeah, and then I think uh, uh, also on the plane when uh, Jordan based Justin Thomas betting $1,000 on guessing the card. Oh yeah, like it just shows like how competitive these guys are, and also how much how much money they have. Yeah, it's stupid. It's it, and like it's like, oh no, he came in seventieth place, and he got like fifty k for the weekend. Like the amount of money these guys are dealing with, especially 
post what happens in the end with what Rory helps kind of negotiate. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's mind blowing. Well, the stories I've heard about Spieth, even like friendly rounds when he plays here in Dallas, is, which is so funny because it's, it's that to a T. I mean, you think of him as this, a little bit of a choir boy, but compared to Scotty Scheffler, he's like no, Scott the bad boy. The choir of, boy yeah. yeah, Spieth looks like the bad boy of golf next to Scotty Scheffler. And they flew up to Southern Hills for the practice round. Yeah, they're like it's private jet moment. Yeah, couldn't, I mean, couldn't, dri couldn't drive two hours or yeah. whatever it is. Yeah, but, but they're yeah, you know, it's forty minute flight, private flight. Why why not? Why wouldn't you do that? Yeah, yeah. and they're playing like what was it, like three hundred dollars a shot. Yeah, almost. like it was, and that was a major championship practice round and it's still that they got to find that edge yeah. So. yeah no but i i that's and does a moment stick out to you for to me a moment did stick out and it was brooks kepka that episode and a lot i'm, I'm surprised none of you mentioned that as being your favorite episode because yeah. some of my buddies really like that one as well um i found that episode to be quite sad actually well that's kind of why i liked it is yeah. that it was and again you can tell that i really wanted some like raw human emotion yeah. stuff and not just kind of like canned unauthentic um, production. And I mean, he was kind of lost and yeah. still kind of is. And to him, for him to admit that and admit that, you know, he was on top of the world and then just freaking lost it because yeah. of an injury and he hasn't been able to get it back. I think it also speaks to the average golfer where you get, you have that swing going and then the moment it's gone, you try your damnedest to get it back and it's hard. And while Brooks might not be the guy that everyone wants to root for, I did find that to be rather interesting. And you don't often see him show that side of himself because he no, always he was, tries to this, be the Superman. Yeah. Well, he was really he vulnerable. He personality. No, he was vulnerable in this. He's he, like he likes to be the tough guy. Like the the like he brings a bit of like at least like a menacing, imposing figure to golf. I think. My disappointment stemmed from, I remember when the series was announced, I was like, we're going to get Brooks versus Bryson, and like we're going to get the behind the scenes on that. But uh, Bryson obviously wasn't even in the show. So, um, yeah, I think, I don't know. I think it was interesting to see the vulnerable side of him. I think that's maybe as much personality we've seen from Brooksy ever. Mm -hmm. I think my issue with that episode, it, it was really good. And I think as far as like being revealing, that was probably one of the better ones. But... It, Again, it goes back to the live versus PGA Tour thing, and, and he's he's clearly not in a good headspace. Uh, the injuries have got him to where he thinks he can't even compete at all. Mm -hmm. But all he was talking about in that episode was how much he does want to compete against the best of the best, and then to just go to live because I don't know if that was the easier option for him, which maybe it was. Yeah, we uh, never got that answer. And I know, and I think I think no, he that, avoided it in the episode, and, and I then, think then he was just there all of a sudden. We never yeah. got him reconciling, like wanting to beat the best and win these tournaments. Yeah, but also joining the dark side. You know. Yeah, I mean? and Poulter was kind of the same way. I thought Poulter was pretty interesting. I think the dude's kind of a, a clown sometimes, but that's that's sort of his bit. Yeah. But he he brought up all the family stuff and the, and the making more money and everything like that, which maybe that's just the very direct reason why he went to live. No, he made, he made the best case for, yeah. for live that, that I think could be made. And, but he, him aside, everyone else who went to live was portrayed as like, Oh man, they just kind of can't hack it anymore. So now they're going to live. Uh, so it was, it was just interesting. But Although, then there was the reports that Brooks is wanting to come back to the PGO tours, having buyer's remorse, which who knows if that's true at all. So like the fact that that came out while, you know, this thing debuts. I, so. I am curious how, and I don't know the involvement of the PGA Tour necessarily directly in this, if they're like a, a name producer or anything like that, or they just have final approval. But will Liv have as prominent a storyline moving forward, or will they just kind of gloss over it? Right, and that's probably part of it, because I would imagine the PGA Tour doesn't really want much Liv yeah. in a show like this. Absolutely. They want as little publicity yeah. as possible, and there's probably got to be some rights agreements where, hey, if we're allowing you all this access to our PGA Tour events, then you got to do this, which then doesn't make it a Netflix production. It makes it a PGA Tour production. And they did have cameras at a, live, at a couple of live events. They did. Yeah. But that's what I was, I mean, I just wasn't... And that's Quite why I'm sure what the involvement was, because it did seem starting out like very much a PGA tour. We're going to give it from this perspective, but I feel like if they had final say, they wouldn't have allowed any, you yeah. know, live cameras at all. So there's some sort of handshake, but maybe not a full agreement. Yeah. <laughs> Did you catch the moment though? Maybe this is one of my favorite moments is the, the Rory episode. He's at uh, East Lake at the tour championship. They had just had their, their meeting, uh, the, the big summit in Delaware where Tiger went and they decided what they're going to do with these designated events. 
and he was telling, I think it was uh, one of the PGA Tour staffers, but he was saying how some of the guys who stayed with the tour, they didn't want to be required to play every mm-hmm. every event. And he was basically saying, we've kind of gotten soft a little bit. Yeah. Because no other sport. Absolutely. No other sport are you allowed to just pick and choose when you're going to play. I know people complain about like NBA load management, but they're going to be playing the best of the best. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that speaks to the fact that Rory is a global superstar and the rest of these guys are just stars in their sports. Yeah. Well, and Rory has become, I was, as a golfer, I was never really all in on the Rory yeah. um, rise, respect his game. Yeah. But over this last maybe year and a half, man, he's made, I'm it's a tough fan. to deny that. I'm a yeah. fan. I mean, it's just, and it, he, because he's. He's embraced that leadership he's, role. He's become like a man yeah. with, with some gonads and. Mm. Golf needs that, and especially yeah. if you're gonna, you know, stand on a platform and compete every week, and you know, claim and want certain things, you gotta, you know, back it up. And he did, you know, he does. Um, you know, he's probably needs to win a major yeah, soon, but That's I mean, he's, he's, a he's major wouldn't hurt him yeah. becoming the ambassador of of golf and t- kind of taking that torch has has been really good. Absolutely. Um, should we wrap up with what our what we want to see? Moving yeah. Who, forward? Do, who yeah. do we want? Well, like, what do we want to see, and who do we want to see kind of moving forward? I think Cam Smith is fascinating to me. And they didn't have him. He must have not agreed to, to do it, or maybe that was too much live. But at the time, he didn't go to live till after the, the tour season. I think he is the one guy that kind of made live, in my mind, the most legitimate. Like he was the open champion by he's far, like the best putter in the world. Mm-hmm. He he's the guy that went toe to toe with Rory and actually beat him last year, which didn't happen often. So. I'd love to have more insight into him. I think he's close with Greg Norman, uh, so that's probably partially why he went to live mm-hmm. on top of the money. But he's the guy that I, I do think he's going to win more majors, and, and he could win one or two this year. Yep. And so I think they're going to have to figure out a way to either convince him to talk, which maybe he won't, but he's, it's going to be hard to ignore him as they go forward if they're doing more seasons. And I, thought, I think he's just a fascinating guy. And – Great personality. The mullet, man. Yeah, he's got so much personality oozing yeah. him and his caddy. Um, yeah, I agree. That would be awesome. I think there's a couple guys I'd like to see. Uh, Xander Shoffley is a guy I really yeah. enjoy, I think would be thrive in a setting like this. Uh, Are they going to bring his dad on, too? Yeah, sure. Can't, can't talk to Xander unless you get the father, the coach, the and flying. helicopter. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, Kevin, uh, is it Kinzer? Kinsner. Kevin Kinsner. Kinsner. Uh, just because yeah. he's he's a huge personality. And obviously, he's very friendly with uh, media, and he's just got like a whole scene down in Georgia. Um, I didn't even think about that one. I think he'd be a lot of fun in kind of like a Damon type way, as like a mid level type guy who who can shoot to the top. Um, yeah, personality wise, he might be a little diametric from from Damon. But yeah, he, but he, I mean, he's he can he's, be kind he's of funny for sure. On course, I mean, he's not in PGA anymore, <laughs> but. I, Bryson, love him or hate him, is fascinating, yeah. and the science of what he does would be really interesting. Mm-hmm. To get some behind the scenes stuff on, and another Dallas tie. Too. And it'd be—I mean, it'll—I don't think it'll ever happen, but Tiger would be phenomenal. Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> that goes without saying. It's like, <laughs> just give me a whole show about Tiger. I wondered or, about or, that because they didn't. They, I don't know if he would have said no. I think it's more he was—he probably had his own stuff going on with the rehab, but. I well, feel like they got to move. They, they're also trying to move on. At least that's for, fair. To the yeah. next guy's like trying to crown Morikawa, which clearly he's. It not. also would be fun, I think, to maybe. I mean, I know it's kind of it's not like a very serious tournament, but if you're trying to bring in kind of the, uh, you know, uh, calmer fans, right? More passive fans. So looking at something like a, a Pebble Beach Pro Am and get some celebrities involved, I think it would be pretty interesting to see how they interact with the players as well. 